You did good? Yeah. 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 Sorry about the cheek. Yeah. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, hi. Just kidding. Fine. Go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> how are you guys doing? How many of you remember our series? How many of you know our series for the past weeks? Uh, <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. You remember. Good job. Um. Yeah, we've been talking about like God's nature in nature, right? Like we've been looking at different things in nature, how simple it is and like how similar it is. And we've been looking at like God's nature in those um, stuff. And so like the past few weeks, we've been talking about like a fire. We've been talking about like nature, like trees and, and like crops and all that stuff. And so like your Hathikleri said today, we're going to be talking about water. Something new. Too big. <laughs> Too big. Too big. Um, and and uh, yeah, before we start, or before we go ahead and get started, um, let's just pray real quick. And uh, let's invite God in, into this place. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, that we are all here, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for the word that you have spoken, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that there is... Um, the, the students here tonight are here, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for their lives, for being here, Lord God. And I pray for those who are not able to make it, Lord God. I pray you just protect them, Lord God. And again, Lord, use me as your vessel tonight, Lord God. Anything that is not of you, Lord, take it away, Lord God. And I pray that we, we just get to know you deeper, Lord God. May we just love you even more tonight, Lord God, after the message, Lord God. And so I pray that you just be with me, Lord God. I pray that you just um, open up our hearts, open up our our souls, Lord God, I pray you just allow us to hear your word alone, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Look at this. Ooh. Ooh. How many inches of tablet is this? I think it's 11. Huh? <laughs> what is that? Do you want to switch to tablet mode? No. Nah. All right. So we're going to be talking about water. How many of you like water? Agua. I like water. Yeah, I don't like water. Uh, nah. <laughs> uh, so I guess before we go on to like the message, um, give you a couple facts about water. I was interested. Like, what are these? Like, so what is it? What's up about water? And uh, maybe if you have any facts about water, feel free to shout it out. Maybe you are nerds out there. We should get smarty pants out there. I got one fact. Did you know that a jellyfish? And a cucumber is made 95% of water. Oh, okay. Why did you say it? <laughs> jellyfish, yeah, made 95% of water. Isn't that crazy? How many of you got stung with a jellyfish before? Nope. Nope? Only flurries? <laughs> um, what else? Any one of you have any like facts about water? It's a debate. You can debate that. Okay, let's not go there. <laughs> I know we can talk about that all day long, but... We are water. We are water? We are water? We are water? Yeah. Yeah. So, right? We are 75% water, and the earth is 75% water. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's actually one of them. Only 1% of the world's water is drinkable, is that correct? Yeah. I think so, something like that, yeah. 70% of it is frozen. Yeah. Not anymore. Isn't that crazy? Not anymore. Well, how about this? The 70% of human brain is water. What? The brain? Yeah. Don't sign me on this. I found it on a website. Hopefully it's right. <laughs> I, can, I, put, I can put my citation in. No, it's like water.com. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Here's another thing. A person can live a month without food, but one week without water. Like he can, but only a week without water. Huh? You sure? You lying? I want to try it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll try it. But you know that, like, you can go for a month without food, but you can only go a week without water. That's crazy. What's up, right? Like, and then people, like, can survive longer without food, but without water. But with water. 
Exactly. So water is really important, so get your hydro flask and keep that around you. Never know. <laughs> and uh, free stickers. Free stickers, yeah. And did you know that water regulates the Earth's temperature? Whatever that means. <laughs> whatever that means, regulates the Earth's temperature, whatever that means. But water is like everywhere, like, right? Like nature, we've been talking about nature, and like water is like such a big thing. Like, I feel like there's just so much water in this world, right? Like there is, like you just see it everywhere. Like when I was in a cruise, uh, maybe a couple months ago, we were in the middle of like nowhere, it was just, just ocean, like miles away. I can't even see any land, and that's crazy, right? And so that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. We're gonna, we're gonna look into God's nature, in nature and in water. So if you want to take notes, we're about to dive in. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. That was a good one. I didn't even know. Man. I guess it's coming like a second nature, nature to me. Uh, All right, anyways, I don't know, man, I'm on fire. Um, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right, so water. Let's talk about water some more. Um, what, are, what are like some of the uses of water to you guys? Or not to you guys, but like anything. Drinking, showering, sometimes. Cleaning, <laughs> cleaning swimming. Come on. Washing. Washing. Putting off fire. Paints bright. You can take out fires with water, right? What else? Oh, Brian, you got something? What else? Um, the ocean. <laughs> All right. Use as the water is the ocean. Right. Makes sense. Comes from the ocean. What's that? Most of our oxygen comes from the ocean. Oh, yeah, oxygen. Because of salt water. Because it's called what? Salt forest. Salt forest? Salt. Okay. Uh, cool. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so like, water uses of water, right? I feel like I'm in that journey right now. <laughs> but like, it's like agriculture, right? Farming, you know, gardening, fishing, um, industrial as well. Like, you can, you, did you know you can cut stuff with like water? Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of like um, manufacturing companies use that, like water jet, and it's crazy. It's like it's using water literally to like cut stuff. That's cool. Um, you know, recreation. Right? Sports. How many of you play water polo? No? My friends do. Your friends do, huh? Yeah. yeah but, um, so skate, wait, wakeboarding. How many of you wakeboard before? Yeah, it's pretty fun. You know, like boating as well. It's pretty fun. What about like using the water as like making energy? Uh, uh, you guys forgot about that. Like those dams, right? Current. Currents, yep. Yeah. Hydroelectric. And then, like, of course, like the household domestic stuff, like um, cooking, drinking, cleaning, washing. And so, one of the things that we're going to talk about is that um, there's so many uses of water, and one of them is cleaning, right? Brushing your teeth. How many of you brush your teeth every day? How many times a day? Two. Point five. Point five. I have a mm. question. <laughs> Car wash, yep, car wash is there. Shower, you need to shower every day. Please don't answer if you don't say it every day. Jerome showers like day and night, it's crazy. Twice a day, sometimes it's crazy. Twice a night, <laughs> dang, that's why we're already driving last year. But um, washing your hands, right? Washing your hands, um, I hope you guys do. <laughs> but like, like that's like that's like one of the main thing about water, right? You use it to wash ourselves, to wash ourselves. Oh, I just repeated myself. <laughs> but uh, we, it's like one of the main uses of that is to wash ourselves, right? Um, so that's like one of the things that really um, spoke to me right away is that just like water cleanses us, you know that Jesus. Oh, I forgot my Bible over there, but I need it later. But like Jesus. Just like, just as water, Jesus' sacrifice cleanses us. And so, um, we have a couple of texts for, for tonight. So, one of them is found in Hebrews 10, 22. And it says, Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting Him, for our guilty conscience have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. 
Isn't that crazy? Like, our guilty conscience has been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. Like, there's nothing in this world that can ever really clean us spiritually than the blood of Jesus. Right? That's really the only thing that that um, that's really cleaning us in, in our lives. We can do all these good things in our lives. We can do... Like, we, we can make ourselves feel better about ourselves by, like, maybe helping out some, like, homeless people or, like, um, texting people, or, like, being a good friend or making jokes or making people smile. But that doesn't, doesn't really, like, you can make donations, you can, like, volunteer, you can give food to, like, the homeless. But that, that, none of those will clean our, our, our sinful nature, right? None of those. But there's only one thing that really cleans, cleanses our our, our, our sins and our sinful nature and that's the blood of Jesus Christ right and, and the crazy thing about um, what, we're, what we're teaching in this place in this sanctuary is that there, there's nothing that we can do nothing else that we can do to to cleanse ourselves you know like a lot of times like we we when we when we think about like religion and all that stuff that you have to do like religion let me describe to you what's the difference between having a relationship with God and having being a religious person. So being a religious person in terms of cleaning, it means that let's say uh, religion is like earning a ticket to where God is. And then you have to get a water from the well, and then you have to bring your own bucket to the mountain where God is, and then you have to wait in line, and then you have to just sit there and wait in line, and then and then when you get to the front of the line, you have to you have to pass the test, like, oh how how have your life how has your life been? Have you been like been a good uh, son, have you been a good student? And then once you pass this test, then you can then you can do certain things. And then when you're um, when you're there, you have to pour your water, and and then they have to check if you brought enough water. And then if you didn't, then you have to go do everything once again. And then you have to do everything again. And then when you get there, you have to ask, you have to like do all these things to just to get cleansed, right? But but the difference between having a religion versus um, having a relationship with God is that just like in Hebrews ten twenty two it says that when you have a relationship with God, God is only waiting for you to ask for forgiveness, and that's the only thing that is like they all you have to do. Like God is waiting for you to wash your hand. All you have to do is confess that we need cleansing and forgiveness, and God is more than willing to love on you. Right. The the crazy thing is that. With religion, it, it tells us to like, oh, okay, you have to do this, you have to do all of that, all of this before you are cleansed, before you're forgiven, before God can cleanse you, before God can talk to you even. But with the rela relationship that God did, because of what God has done on the cross, like we can literally go up to Him and say, Jesus, I know that I've sinned, I know that I've been sinful, but you know what? It's not about my acts, it's not about what I've been doing, but it's about you. And God is more than willing to like love when you when you accept that when you when you face the fact that you need um, you need you need um, you need forgiveness and you need cleansing. God is more than willing. There's nothing else that you have to do in order to get cleansed by 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 Jesus because He's already done it for us. Amen. Like there's there's literally nothing else that we have to do but confess and ask God. You know what? I've been in, in, in I've been in, in in such a slump in my walk. Father, I've been just putting you aside, and I've been just just focusing on me. Father, here I am. You know, I, I need you. And so God is more than willing to to clean you and to love on you, right? And so that's one of one one of the main points that um, I have for tonight is that water just just like water cleanses us, the blood of Jesus Christ can also cleanse us spiritually. Amen. And um, um, so number two, just a transition. Transition. You know, the past few weeks has been like it's been like straight out fire, <laughs> right? Like, like it's been. It's probably like the first time I've seen the road to be like super like smoky, right? How many of you ever experienced that before? Like, when it's foggy. When it's foggy, right? Like, I'm I'm thinking like, why is it so foggy? But it's not really foggy. It's just like straight out smoke from like miles away. I've been, I drove in a cloud once. A cloud one? Yeah, Hawaii? In Maui. In Maui, yeah. In the volcano? Mm-hmm. Haleakala? Yeah. Yeah. 
But um, like the past few weeks, like I think it was like probably straight two weeks, or we had two weeks of that of those going on, and um, and then this week was it this week it started raining, yeah. right? The past two weeks has been like it's been shut off fire, it's been smoky in the Bay Area in California, but like this week it started raining. Do you guys think that that's that's a coincidence? It's, that's just crazy. Like it could have started raining next week or like or next month, right? But I don't think that's a co coincidence at all. I think that's God saying, like, you know what? This is me. I'm pouring my blessing. This is me saving you guys. This is me I'm pouring out grace to you guys. Cause there's no coincidence in, in this. I don't think there's coincidence. It's, I think God really was just having His heart just to save us, you know, like, the fire's been out there, and, and it's been really bad, and then, I think there's no coincidence that there, it was raining this week, and I think um, that shows, like, like what, what puts a fire, right, the water, and so, uh, point number two is that just as, oh, I don't know, just as water, <laughs> just as water rescues us from fire calamities, we receive salvation through Jesus Christ. It's kind of like similar to number one, but um, we're talking about like salvation here, right? There's a difference between forgiven and salvation. Um, but in the in the Bible, rain, um, rain. Oh, what is it? Lost my train of rain of thought. Come on, rain. In the Bible, like rain was like a sign of a blessing. Like there's there's been like there's so many stories in the Bible where um, the Israelites or like some group of people was like going through like such a dry season in their lives, right? Where they had like literally no nothing, and and back then like water and rain is like such a big source of like living for them because a lot of them were like farmers, and if you're like if your ground is super dry, then nothing's gonna grow, and so like when it rains. It, a lot of times in the Bible, it's referred to as the blessing of God, right? And so, uh, the people of Joel, um, there's a story in Joel when uh, they were like in the drought for such a long time, right? It says here, um, next slide. Sorry, it's all white. You can't read it. And, uh, and, and here it says in Joel 1, chapter 1, it says, Though we planted fig seeds, they lie dry and dead in the dirt. The barns are empty and falling down. The storerooms for grain have been broken down because the grain has dried up. And then he says, Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. Right? We, show, we see here, like, they've been planting, like, fig seeds, and they've been planting everywhere in, in, in the dirt, but nothing's growing because it's so dry. But then here, um, God finally answers their prayer and gives them rain, and it's, it's shown as a blessing. But, um, so that, that's like the most common thing, but like, how many of you remember Noah's Ark? I'm sure all of us, almost all, everyone here. Like, what do you think about that, like the flood? What do you guys think about the flood? Do you think like the, the flood was like a sign of a blessing? God for meant for cleansing, but I'm gonna to read to you this verse, uh, Genesis, 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 verse six or chapter six. It says, "The Lord saw the human beings on the earth were very wicked, and that everything they thought about was evil. He was sorry he had made human beings on earth, and his heart was filled with pain. I will bring flood of water on the earth to destroy all living things." that live under the sky, including everything that has breath of life. Everything on earth will die, but I will make an agreement with you. He was talking to uh, Noah. Your sons, your wife, your sons, who wife will all go with you. Like he, he brought the flood because like the human nature, the human, um, the people, the humans. <laughs> it's kind of sweet to say, you humans. <laughs> But like the people back then was like so being being so wicked like they were just like straight up ignoring God because in this time like God was kind of speaking to um, 
Noah and, and um, he was telling them the people to to like um, to change their ways, but the people were just so wicked that they won't even they won't acknowledge it. And so at one time, at one point, God said, "You know what? I will bring flood. I will bring flood and, and to the depths of the earth. Like nothing else in this world could could like survive." Isn't that crazy? Like at some points in the Bible, the rain is like a, a sign of a blessing. But at this time, it seems like God was like so mad that He wanted to like flood everyone, right? Isn't that kind of contrasting to you guys a little bit, right? I was kind of convict. I was like kind of contrasted here too. Contrast, con contrasted. Is that a word? <laughs> it is now. Yeah, I was kind of conflicted. Like. Um, Rain was a sign of a blessing, but also here in the story, um, it's like a sign of like God giving up a little bit, right? Because it says right there in Genesis 6, it said, I will bring flood of water and earth to destroy all living things that live under the sky. You know, it, it's crazy to me, like, what's God? Dang, God, God must be really mad. <laughs> what they do, man? I better not do the same thing. Because, you know, we're going to be flooded. But, but I think we have to view this as like the story, as like, just like Pastor Francis was saying in the past day, we have to view the story of the Bible sometimes as like a human being. Because a lot of times we look at it, it's like, oh, what? What the heck? Why would you God do that like back then? But if you put yourself in that, in Noah's position, I want you guys to be like um, in Noah's position, right? Let's say we're like, Let's say Noah was our father right now with all the kids and and imagine like everyone in this world will die except you guys. Right? Can you imagine that? Like every one of you guys, <laughs> everyone else outside of this room would die except you guys. Except us. Can you imagine that? Like like that that would be such like a, a privilege for us to like to be like the chosen ones, right? And like, and the funny thing is that even though we're not perfect, you know, like even we're we're not saying that we're perfect, but like, God was pleased with Noah, that He allowed His whole household to be saved, He to allow His whole household to to be part of in the ark, right? And so that's I think that's 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 God showing His grace to humanity. Like He literally could have whipped out Noah's Noah as well and the whole everyone on this earth, but he didn't, right? Because he still loved the humanity. He knows that he has hope. He knows that there's hope in humanity. And 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 think about this, right? If when your phone or laptop freezes, what do you guys do? You wait. <laughs> Dang, what a patient man. That's good though. What about you guys? When your phone, like, it just won't move anywhere. It won't scroll up anymore. Like, what do you guys do? Yeah, basically you reset it, right? Like Lucas said, you reset it. You don't get, you don't get like a new phone, new phone, right? I don't, well, maybe if you're rich <laughs> in the future, but like, phone's frozen, you get a new one. <laughs> don't forget about us when you're at that point in your life, right? <laughs> but um, but like that's I think that's God, that's what God was doing here. Like He knew that the humanity was like stuck. He knew that humanity was like so wicked, but. He, he sees hope in Noah because he was pleased, pleased with him. And that he could have, God could have like literally just wiped everyone out, but he saved human, still he saved human nature, humanity. He still he saved humanity through Noah, right? And I think that's grace because he literally could have started over and just, you know what? Forget earth. I built, I built it in seven days and they ruined it. I'm, let's just make a new one, you know? Make a, make a new earth, right? But but that's not that's not what God did, right? God was still so gracious that he wanted he wanted us to have a fresh beginning, a new beginning from his salvation, right? Um, God doesn't just throw us away. God doesn't just um, make new human new humans, new people. I'm saying humans, <laughs> such a funny word, human. A robot. A robot. No, but like God is so gracious that He allowed Noah's family and his household to be saved 
who was now wicked in their ways, instead of like wiping all of humanity out. Like instead of like seeing Noah's Ark and, and seeing God like just being so like so mad about these people that he wiped he like wiped out almost ninety nine percent of humanity. We have to see it as like dang, he still saved humanity that way as well, right? And so just like as a fire, if you go back one slide, just as water uh, oh my just as water could save rescue us from for our calamities, we receive salvation through Jesus Christ, through God and Jesus Christ, right? And so, um, so that's the second point. So the first one was that, what was the first one? Forgot already? Number two, what was number two we just read? Was it? No. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, number three. This is going to be the last one for me. Um, but how, what was your favorite, what's your guys' favorite game when you were like little? Either, either it's a like computer or outside. What is it? Shout it out. Chris, I'm going to go one by one, so shout it out. Smash Bros. Bro. Tag. Tag. Hey, somebody got tagged. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Rock, paper, scissors? Rock, paper, scissors. What is it? Uh, I don't know. Marbles. Marbles. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. Uh, three, two, one. Tag, tag, tag freeze. Tag. Favorite game back when you were little? Uh, That's <laughs> iPhone. All right, okay. Let's Chopsticks. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Bradley? Football. Yeah, you. Slap. Don't know. 52 pickup. Switch. DS. I'm just kidding. Uh, for me, it was probably like, oop, I think for me, it was like basketball or, or like the street games outside with my friends. But like, in the computer, how many of you ever used Windows 97? Yeah. Dang, some of you. Who's who's not born before ninety seven? Who's not ninety seven before? Dang, for real? Almost half. Only means you're old. I only remember Windows Vista. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, it was a DA. All right, so but how how many of you have used Windows ninety seven? Bradley's like Bradley's like what? I see the logo. Yeah, logo, but. There's like, oh dang, this, this must be like a bad example now then, but there's probably like a similar game now, but the next picture is like one of my favorite um, computer games. I don't know if you know, it's not snake. That's what my friends are saying. It's not snake. This is like, this is called uh, Pipe Dream. Oh, yeah. oh, I remember this. Yeah, there we go, all right. How many of you see, I think there's app games for this now, right? No, what's called I Really old laptop that had that game. Yeah? It was so intense, like, the water's coming, the water's coming. But for those who hasn't played this, S right here is like the starting point. And so when the game starts, or when you receive a new level, the water starts coming out from the starting point. And what you have to do is, like, you have to, like, make sure that the water has something to flow with. So, like, you can't put this. So you have to match it, like the next box has to match it, has to be matched, otherwise the water would spill. I don't know how many of you get it. You guys get it? Yeah. Like literally like the water would be coming out and you're like trying to form this like pipes. And you have to connect the pipes and you have to change the pipes. And, and there's like different pipes here and like literally the water is like coming in the, through the pipe and just like panicking. It was like so, so crazy. I feel like, I feel like it was such a procrastination game. I think that's how I went through college. Good, <laughs> you know. But like, this was like one of my favorite games. Like the water was just flowing. Like it's just flowing. You have to like make way for it. And so that that's like one of the one of the um, what's it called? Uh, qualities of water or liquid, right? Quality, quality, characteristics of water or liquid is that it can take any shape or any form, right? We learned this in like, what, second grade? Kindergarten, right? And so, 
in this game, like, this water can just literally flow and flow as long as there's something to go into. But, like, if this game is, like, say, like, at this point you messed up, and, like, there's nothing for the water to flow, then the game's over. Right? So, like, that's one of the, main, the crazy thing about, like, water is that it can literally take any shape or form. So what's the point of that? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hashtag nice. And so what? <laughs> so what? But like, I was thinking about this, like, it's crazy, because it's crazy, because when I, when I was thinking about it, it's like, water, God's nature, in nature, God's nature, in water, and water can take any shape or form. And, and it brought me to this verse, and it, and it just brought me to this verse, and I started thinking about, like, if water can take any container and just take over that container, even though, even though whatever form it is, whatever shape or form it is, and, and, and that just reminds me that God also can take us no matter what shape or form we are in in our lives, right? God's nature in nature in water, that water can like take any shape or form, but also God can take any shape or form in your life. Like it doesn't matter like, if you're, like, you feel like you're broken, it doesn't matter. If you feel like you've been like, you're just a weird container of life, <laughs> of water in this earth. And like you feel like you're just you're just not good enough. You feel like you're just, God can't, can't use you. Or you feel like God, you've been such a failure. You feel like God can't, can't use you anymore. But like this nature of water, of liquid, that the fact that it can take any shape or form or matter, it's like the same thing with God, that um, God can take any shape, form, or manner. And no matter what shape you are in your life, God can use you. And the only thing that is a requirement, though, is that the container needs to be open. Right? And it, the container needs to be open that the water can flow into it. And it's the same way with us in our lives, in our spiritual walk. It doesn't matter what shape or form, or it doesn't matter what we've been through in life, but as long as we're open, to receive God's to receive God's grace. And as long as we allow God to to come into our hearts, to come in into our lives, because that's where God can enter into our hearts, through through our hearts. And so as long as as long as our hearts is open, is open for God to come in into our lives, it doesn't matter what shape, what, what form, or what where you've been in your life. Right? And so um, it brought me to um, Psalms 85, 4 to 6. And this is when I need the Bible, because I had this Bible, I had like notes, like a side note, it's very really cool. So Psalm 85, 46, I'm just gonna read that real quick, and I'm gonna show you guys this note. Um, it says in Psalm 85, 46, it says, King David was saying, but why are people even important to you? Why do you take care of human beings? You made them a little lower than angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You put them in charge of everything you have made. Like, David was asking, asking here, like, why did God allow human beings to be like the ruler of all cre creation? Like, I'm in, I don't know if you've made any project in your like science class that you, you created something and you didn't want any, anyone to like, touch it. I don't, I don't know if any one of you have ever like, and that. Uh, like, when I was like, I couldn't stop them. <laughs> when I was like in grade school, like I, we made like this, I think this solar system thing. I would not let anyone touch it because I made it, <laughs> you know? But like, imagine this, like God created the whole world, but he allowed human beings to like take over everything. Like he had angels, literally he says he, you made human beings a little lower than the angels, and then you crowned them with honor and glory, and then you put them in charge of everything. And so I'm gonna read this, this like side note that the, this Bible says, right? In, in this Psalm, David is amazed that the awesome God of heaven would use people to rule the earth. David, David says that we seem like weaklings, says here. Not worthy of such a place of honor, has anyone told you lately that you are you are worth a crown of glory, worth a place of honor? Well, you are. You are. You are. Um, 
worthy of crown and glory. Sometimes it may seem like your worth comes from your, from like your grades in school. Sometimes it, your worthy comes from like your, on your social status or your followers, in Instagram, right? But it doesn't. Accomplishments are great, but they don't make you more acceptable to God. You couldn't get God to love you even more, even if you tried. He has loved you completely from the first time he thought of you. He's your biggest fan. He adores you. You hold a place of honor in his heart. He is so proud of you and so in love with you that he's put a crown of glory and honor on you. That's crazy, right? It just reminds me, like, there's literally nothing, like, just like what I've been saying all day today, there's literally nothing else that we can do to, to satisfy God, to, to please God. Because God is so pleased with you already. God is so, like, he's, he's like literally your number one fan. Is that as weird as that, that sounds? But God is like, when he first thought of you, he was so in love with you that he made, he made like this earth and he made you like take over it, right? And so that's like the last point is that just like water can take any shape or form, as long as we allow God to in our lives through our hearts and we're open for God to take over our lives, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the things that we've done, even the failures, even the accomplishments, it doesn't matter. Because God has loved you even, even before all the things you've done. Amen. So that's God's nature in nature and water. And so it, it, I, hope, I hope that brought a little, little bit of different insight to you. Um, just when you drink water next time or when you take a shower, just imagine, you know, the goodness of God. And um, I pray that you just, that you just um, see the way, see things the way we are and how we are made differently after tonight. So let's pray real quick before we go into our discussions. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your, your word, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for, for using water, Lord God, um, as, as, as something that um, exa exemplifies your love for us. Thank you, Lord, Father, that, you, that, that your blood can cleanse us, Lord God, that your blood can can forgive us, Lord God, that your blood can can wipe away any anything that is um, not of you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross that, so that we may be cleansed, so that we can come and receive your glory, Lord God. We, we receive you, Lord God. We thank you that we are forgiven, Lord God. And Lord Father, we thank you, Lord, for the grace that you give us, the new beginnings that you give us, Lord God. I know water is like, I know there's been so much fire and, 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 and water has been able to take that away, to put that out, Lord God. I, pray, I thank you, Lord God, that you also can put out any fire in our lives, Lord God, that you can come and save us from anything that is um, that we are struggling with, Lord God. We thank you that you can save us, Lord God. And we thank you that you just don't wipe us away, you just don't turn around from us when we fail, when we sin, Lord God. But you always comes. And, and save us, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for your salvation. And lastly, Lord, we thank you that there's nothing else in this world that we can do to, to satisfy you. There's nothing else in this world that, that can make you smile, Lord God, but just being us, Lord God. We thank you that it doesn't matter what we've been through in our lives. We thank you that it, it doesn't matter what failures, Lord God. It doesn't matter the things that we've done, Lord God, us, but it is our open hearts that that you require for us to have, Lord God. So tonight, I pray that we just, all, all, all of us, Lord God, that maybe we just all open our hearts, Lord God, to receive you, Lord God, to to not just depend on our own ways, to not depend on our own doings, Lord God, but to rely on you, to receive you in our hearts, Lord God, so that you can take over our lives, Lord God. And I know sometimes that we've failed you, God, but Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are greater than all of these things, Lord God. We thank you, God, for for just the simple things that we can see in this world that reflects your love, because everything in this world just reflects back to you, Lord. And I pray that you just allow us to seek you more. I pray that you just allow us to overcome any temptation, Lord God. Allow us to, to seek any any doubt in our lives, Lord God, and overcome that with your glory, Lord God. And I know sometimes in this life, in this world, that we may feel like we're not good enough, Lord God. We may feel like we're not worthy enough, Lord God, to be called your son, Lord God. But thank you for the reminder that you have 
given us a crown, Lord God. And you have given us the glory, Lord God. Lord, you are so good to us, Lord. We thank you, Father, just for being so good and being so gracious in our lives, Lord. I pray that you just bless the discussions that we're about to have. I pray that you just allow us to get to know you even deeper, Lord God. I pray that you just be with us, Lord. And so, Heavenly Father, um, we thank you for being in this place, Lord God. And bless the discussion groups tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.